grim discovery. Eight-year-old Graham Thorne, the child of the Opera House lottery winners, kidnapped and held for ransom more than five weeks ago, has been found dead in Seaport. Daily from now on. Hey. Nice shot, Flash. Uh, we need to increase the circulation by 20,000 or the sun will bury us before the year is out. Graham Thorne, the Opera House lottery murder. It's been a gift to us. It's a tragedy. Yes, it is a terrible tragedy and every parent in the city needs to know what has happened to this boy. What about the family? Yes, even get on to the father. He's a talker. What about um, photos, uh, anything from the crime scene? Like a shot of the body? Yeah. Sure, why not? This is news. This is happening now. The murderer is still out there. We need to be careful we don't interfere with the investigation, at least until someone's arrested. Yes, but we don't have the right to tell people only the bits that we think they should hear. That isn't reporting, that is censorship. But we also don't have the right to use a family's pain to sell newspapers. This is the first time a child has been held for ransom and killed in this country. People need to know their world is changing. OK, what about a political angle? Well, the government encouraged people to enter the lottery because they mismanaged funds for the Opera House, the result of which is the murder of a young boy. Right. It. Look, if we're wrong, if people don't want this sort of news, they won't buy a paper. Heard something else you might be interested in? Yeah. The Packers have put in a bid for the Anglican Press. Why do they want them? We want to move ahead with their plans to take you on in the suburbs. They're going to need their presses. Stubborn old bastard. How much have they bid? Forty odd thousand. Still only a verbal agreement. Clyde's handling it. The old man's in hospital, hasn't been well since the lady passed. Mm. I also heard you don't have the cash to take them on. That's rubbish, where'd you hear that? You tell the troops I will be selling the shirt off my back before we go down to the packers. Rupert, no one wants to buy your shirt. Listen, I, uh, I need you to uh, find me some money urgently. Yes, I know that, I know that, uh, but I'm, I'm needing 40 grand. He's a little scotch. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Doctor said I'll be here for a while. I thought he said you're on the mend. No, 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 no. I, I think I need a few more days. Finish mm. your drink. Yeah. Hello, who's this? Who's this? Oh, no, no, not <laughs> here. Come on, Henry, no. up again. <laughs> Look, this is unhygienic. Yes, how could you deny him, eh? eh? I'd rather be bitten by him than any of the humans in here. I don't think anyone was offering, so oh, Frank. Oh, you cheeky monkey. Just give me a couple of minutes, really, mate. Just a couple of minutes, please. Oh. I'll buy you a drink later, eh? <laughs> How are the boys? I haven't seen or heard from either of them, so Frank. She held us together, you know. Hey, Karen, here. Ah, oh, no, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you just missed all the pretty nurses. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. So far, how are you? Have the outfit, have the outfit. Ah, here's the boy. Hey, hey. What is it? I hate to trouble you with this, Sir Frank. Spit it in. <sighs> Murdoch has been making approaches to the Anglican press. Jesus wept. It's like a border collie, then, what? And I hear a cheque has been forwarded to the right people. We gave him a cheque before he did. I've asked the receiver for a meeting. No! No more meetings. We need to teach that little bastard to mind his own business once and for all. Well, how do we do that? We take what is ours. We need my boys. Hang on, boys. Just hang on, hang on. Hang on, all right? I represent Sir Frank Packer's legal concerns. 
Who are you? I'm handling the sale of this business, and I'm here to tell you the Packers have no claim on these printing presses. You blokes, you took our check. I'm sorry you were led to believe your offer has been accepted, all right? But this property is still in my client's hands. Look, can we at least have a look around now we're here, see what we're bidding for? You're welcome to inspect the exterior of the property and the grounds, but I can't let you inside. All right, thanks very much. Stay here. Oi! It's got to be a way in. I thought you couldn't climb through a window. I need a hand. Thanks for coming out, Brownie. I had a chance to get closer to the package. You got some help? Yeah, it's all taken care of. What's this? Oh, I thought you might like to hear how it all goes down. Really? And maybe if you're close enough, you can note any obstacles for us. You want me to, to keep a lookout? No. Cops said they agree with Dad. Possession's nine-tenths of the law. It's ours now. Hey, here we go. show about this kind of stuff. Like gangsters and shit. No, we're not quite gangsters. Yeah. Cops and robbers, fast girls. I mean, you look what Murdoch's done with the mirror. People love a bit of tip, bit of blood. You'll never convince Dad to make a cop show. Not when you can get them from the States for bugger all. People want to see shows about themselves. People they know. Can't get that in the States. Get it! 
better stop the presses, Rupert. Extra, extra, night suns in city brawl. I'll take one, please. There you go, ma'am. Thank you. Paper! Extra, extra, night suns in city brawl. Come on, head him up. Head him up. No more bets. No more bets. Here we go. Head him up. Come in, Spinner. Come in. Here we go. Yay! Beautiful. Beautiful. Here we go. Head him up. Head him up. Head him up. Head him up. Pay him up. Okay, place your bets, gentlemen. Here we go. Rupert! Hey. Hey. Oh, here you go. Hold that. Hold that. Lovely. Hello, darling. What are you two doing here? How are you? You didn't come home. No, we had a big story. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. I haven't slept either. Haven't you? You've been keeping your mummy up, have you? Rupert. Look, I'm sorry, love. It was, um... It seemed a bit too late to call. Do you want to get something to eat? I don't want to eat. Okay, well, listen. Hey, just come in here. No. No, you're not hiding me away. Mm. Come on, Pat. You wanted to come to Sydney and you knew I'd be busy. I need some time to myself. What about Prue? Oh. Oh, come on. Pat. No permanent damage, so thank you. Where do you think you're going? Well, it's been a pleasure, my love, but uh, I'm afraid I must leave. Uh, you. Let me check with your doctor first. Uh, look, before the maid gets here, there's a little something in the drawer for you. Huh? Sister, thank you very much. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, to be a wrangle. Yeah. Now, lawyers would love that. The cost may outweigh the benefit. Yeah, it is. Tell Murdoch, we'll split the suburban market 50-50. But I want the negatives. You can give me that. Come in, let's have a look at you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, didn't I teach you? Right, what didn't I teach you? You keep your hands up! You keep them up! Hey, that's better. What happened? Just, they got the better of us. Yeah, that's pretty bloody obvious. Give us a look at you. Yeah, I bet Murdoch hasn't got a scratch on him. It wasn't there. He sent Brown instead. Wish somebody's got some brains. You told us to go, Dad. I didn't tell you to get your face smashed in. For God's sake! Why must my son... Maybe you prefer Rupert was your son. Well, maybe I would. You want me to take you home? No. I don't want to look at either of you. I'm going sailing. Australian challenger for yachting's coveted America's Cup, Gretel, finds her sea legs in American waters after the long journey from down under. She will meet the American winner of a series of elimination trials and hopes to be the first foreign yacht to win the famous Old Mug, as Sir Thomas Lipton called it. found the reception here in Newport, Sir Frank. Ah, well, the, uh, the natives are very friendly at the moment. And the name Gretel, Sir Frank? Can you give us some insights? Uh, Gretel, and uh, she's named in uh, honour of a very gracious Australian. Is she up to sailing seven consecutive races in unfamiliar waters? Uh, that's the best of seven. Uh, she only needs to race four times if we do it right. Well, what makes you think you can win the America's Cup? Alcohol and delusions of grandeur. Uh, thanks, boys. Oh, you made it. I couldn't resist. So when do I get to meet the president? Oh, I see. <laughs> I came to see you, Frank. New 
Newport, Rhode Island is a kind of working museum of two great traditions, American seamanship and American wealth. It was a great port. It became a great resort. One of the grandest of them, the Breakers, was the scene of a party in the old tradition celebrating this year's challenge race. particularly glad to be here because uh, this cup is being challenged by our friends from Australia to the crew of the Gretel and the crew of the Weatherman. All the way through this trip well, we've had uh, extraordinary welcome and uh, friendship and uh, you know, well, people, people saying well we don't actually want you to win uh, but uh, you know, if there's anything we can uh, do to help you uh, put on a good show we will do so. Which is, uh, and uh, so win, win, lose or draw, we hope we'll be as welcome as we are now. Thank you. Bloody hell. Did you do too well, did I? They adore you. I adore you. Grateful catching long driving waves like a surfboard back home, plugs level with the defender and then takes the lead. The white spinnaker moves out from behind the red and for the first time in 28 years, a challenger is to win one race of the series. For Australia, proud pictures for the world to see. As to the sounds of hooters and horns, Grateful goes on to record the fastest time ever by a 12 meter in the cup. Don't worry about taking notes, you can, you can check them with me later if you like. Um, Mr. Raven said, uh, Zell said that it would be good for me to do an interview with you about running the paper. Hey, they've won a race. Put the tilly on. Well, uh, Zell runs the paper, really. I'm busy with other stuff now. Oh. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, sis, sis, sit down. I didn't mean for you to leave. This is your first uh, proper interview, Anna. No, I've been a cadet here for three months. I just haven't interviewed anyone like you before. That's the Wollongong station. Change it to Channel 9. Did I see you having lunch with the leader of the opposition yesterday, Mr. Murdoch? Well, politicians and journalists go hand in hand. Well, I've recently put in a, uh, a bid for the third television licence here in Sydney. Are you on with a chance? Well, I have a uh, pretty good track record resurrecting newspapers and, uh, and I have experience in TV, so if the government plays fair, I don't see why not. Well, I just turned 18 and even I know the government doesn't play fair. Really, Anna? You've picked that up in three months. Well, it's the same in every scene. It all comes down to who you know. You might have to put a bet on for me. I'm skint. Mm -hmm. You know I'm good for it. They won't take any more off me. There's your bet of the day. Go on, have a go. No, the Packers aren't in. Oh, that's what they want you to believe. Jeff, hi, David. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Good afternoon, Rupert. How is our lovely Lady Murdoch? She's very well, thank you. Send her my regards. She does a lot of good work, your mum. Yeah, she is quite something. You're in the running for a TV licence, I hear. Yes, that's right. Um, I, um, I have to make a formal presentation to the board uh, once the hearings begin. You must almost be as busy as me. <laughs> well, I wondered if you might uh, give me some insight into the board's expectations of the recipient. I think you make an excellent candidate. Really? 
Great. Well, perhaps uh, we might get that. It's not my decision. Oh. Hmm. Now, if you'll excuse me, Rupert, I, uh, I need to get a bet on. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Prime Minister. Race five, and from the starter's gun, Weatherly scuds into the coveted windward position to open up an early lead. Gretel's crew work like demons, but in the end, the American sloop is well clear to come home an easy winner. It's a decisive victory which knocks out Australia's chances for the series, but Blue Water men will long remember that it was the Aussies who put a real scare into the holders of the America's Cup. Sir Frank, Mrs. Kennedy would like to offer you this gift. How do you feel, Sir Frank? I don't know. I don't feel anything. What are your plans now? To get off this pier if you'll get out of my way. You want to go to my place? Sure. Sir, I have placed a call for you. Can you follow me, sir? Just putting you through to the Prime Minister's office. Right, eh? Congratulations, Sir Frank. Uh, well, we did our best. Everyone's very proud. Worth every cent, eh? <laughs> Uh, Prime Minister, uh, the reason for my call. I hear there's some serious competition for that third television license. Got your license for Channel 9, Sir Frank. I don't see how this is relevant to you. Yes, I'm not afraid of the competition, sir. You just don't want Murdoch to have it. Murdoch is a commie. Now, hang on. Mm. And considering how good things are here with our allies... We can't deny him just because of some silly things he said at university. Well, let me tell you, sir, that he will not give you the same kind of favourable coverage that you are currently receiving from us. You understand? His newspapers have already shown some support for the opposition. Congratulations once again, Sir Frank, and uh, thank you for calling and sharing your efforts with all of us. Right here, then. Fucking bastards! Now, now. Menzies made it sound like I was in. Well, of course he did. He's a politician. Who did get the loss? Oh, consortium. Telecasters. But it was the fucking Packers doing. I just can't win with these people. They've got too much influence. What about Labor? They need a friend, don't they? Oh, once you open that door, Rupert, there's no closing it. Well, I opened it the minute I decided to follow in my father's footsteps. I just need to stop being so coy. I thought you were being clever, staying independent. What was the name of that regional station we picked up on the telly when we were watching the yacht race? Uh, Wollongong. Uh, Windfall. That's the one. Hello, could I see uh, Ted Burrows, please? Does he know you're coming? No, it's a surprise. Name? Uh, Rupert Murdoch. Your signal here is strong enough to reach Sydney. Technically. Well, it needs some adjustment, but if we've got the right technician in here, we could have you broadcasting to um, most of Western Sydney, if not further in. It'll cost money I don't have. Oh, I can help with that. Why the interest? Oh, I recently competed for a, a Sydney licence, but I missed out. There are restrictions on ownership of regional stations like this one, too, you know? Oh, no, I'm, I'm simply here as an investor. You would retain full possession of the licence. I'm offering you a chance to get out of debt. I got all my programming from Sydney. Well, we can buy it ourselves. <laughs> Wait, sell it to you. I've tried. I've, I've been to New York, London. If you're anywhere near the Sydney market and you're not with the two big stations, seven or nine, you can forget it. Is that so? Thank you, sir. Enjoy your flight. Thank you. <sighs> Hello, little darling. How are you? You good? Thanks, Pat. I'd like to go to New York too. Oh, come on, Pat. I'll, just... I'll be back in a couple of days. Well, maybe I won't be here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your final flight 895 to New York. Please make your way to the Come on. 
You're the best talker I know. Say something. <laughs>